Hello everyone and welcome back to In the Greenhouse, the relaxing little question and answer session that we have here with Siri, that's me, about the different series that we have on our channel, our community, and some of my personal life. Often lots and lots of answers about the plants and animals of the world. And we've got a very special, interesting day. So let's just dive right into it. Today's questions are going to be a little bit more assorted than usual, but I figured that'd be okay because this is a very assorted collection of plants that we've got going. I've been doing just a little bit of breeding since last time you guys were here with me. These Nox are absolutely fascinating. The Nox tiger fern is one of the very rare plants that grew from our extinct seeds we purchased. In fact, oh look, we've got some new extinct seeds that we could try out. And we're able to afford all of those amazing things thanks to these fantastic fabled lemon bushes. They are selling for almost $500. That is just absolutely amazing. We've been able to buy a fountain, a whole bunch of different plant growth serums. It's just been fantastic. Oh, I love these. Oh, they're so fun. And I crossbred some of our fabled and extinct seeds and ended up with a couple interesting little crosses I think we're going to have to do get purebred strands of. Like this mystic glabler and the blazing multiflora. And then this viola bamboo, I can't remember if we've had or not, so we're going to go ahead and get another one. And let's see, definitely need some more of my fabled lemon bush seeds, so we'll get these two producing. But otherwise, let's sell these guys. Look at all those beautiful roses. How could anyone resist that, you know what I mean? And what we're going to do today while we answer the questions is we are going to use the mutation liquid on five of the seeds. I plucked out some of the common seeds that we have in our overflowing seed storage area. And I figure now that we're rolling in the money, it would be really fun to work our way through some of the common seeds by using the mutation liquid on them. So it's going to be kind of a fun little science experiment. Also, let's get our Nox Tiger Fern. I think I have enough purebred of those guys. Let's see, one right there. So I've got one purebred strand. So let's go ahead and get one more purebred strand. But then let's cross the Nox with the bamboo, the viola bamboo, and see what happens. There we go. So that should turn up some interesting hybrids just to begin with. But all right, let's see what we have today. Well, all right, random question from the Potato King. Have you ever been overseas? If so, where? If not, where would you like to go and why? And that's a really good question. I have not yet traveled overseas. All right, so this seed's that guy. But I would really love to. Um, definitely to Hawaii because I have a lot of family in Hawaii. My dad is from Hawaii. Uh, and I've just never been. Our family couldn't afford it. And I want to I wanna change that, you know? I want to go and see what's out there. It's just a beautiful place, and not only is it one of like the vacation destinations of the world, but it's also my, my cultural home. So Hawaii is definitely the number one place I would like to go. And there's a fair chance that we might actually be, whoopsie daisy, that we might actually be moving to Hawaii. Um, you know, not something you want to get your heart too set on, but a good chance that we might be going out there for study and research. So I'm pretty excited because you can imagine I would be all over the place doing vlogs 24-7 if we moved to Hawaii. And I would be doing like, oh, look at this, look at this, look at all these things. So many vlogs. It would be really fun. I would really, really look forward to that. Um, ooh, we're going to have a lot of seeds in our hands pretty soon. So let's try to sell out some of these old guys and get a little bit of room for those interesting seeds that we're going to see soon. Uh, but really, uh, my mate and I are very adventurous. We're, we're kind of introverts, we like to have our own quiet days, but we both look out to the world with a lot of interest and we have a ton of curiosity that we love nurturing. So I have a feeling that we would be very happy to travel all over the world. That's one of our goals in life, is to travel the world, learn multiple languages, um, really see as many things as we can. And you can imagine, I want to travel the world to see the plants and the animals that are all over our planet. And if I'm still running the channel when we start globe hopping, you can bet that I'm going to be doing lots and lots of video, especially of the zoos, conservation centers. That's really my dream. Someone else, who was it that asked my dream job? Let's see. What's your dream job by Ashley? And that actually would be my dream job, is if I could uh, travel all over my country, my home country in the United States, or if I could travel all over the world. Um, 
looking at all the different animals and the different plants, interviewing people who specialize in researching those things and specialize in uh, figuring out ways where locals can live in harmony with their environment because that's kind of difficult for a lot of places where a lot of endangered species are pushed to the critical brink. Well, guess what? The humans are also usually cr pushed against the brink in those areas too. Very poverty-ridden places, especially like out in India, along the forest. India has very little native forest left. Um, but again, you've got such a gigantic population out there who lives in so much poverty. You really, how can you blame someone whose children are serving for shooting a tiger if there's no other option? You know what I mean? So what I wish I could do is not only travel and interview the happy side of things, but also the real side of things, not the depressing or sad stuff. Just look, these are the problems and we have to figure out ways to address them sort of things. Like how do you solve the problems of poverty and famine among people who live in this area and compete with these animals for the resources? How do you solve the problems of the illegal animal trade? How do you solve the problems of uh, like the illegal animal part trade? So I would love to address those things a little bit more up front and safely uh, in the future too. That would be fun. Ma'am, do not fuss at me about expensive roses. You knew walking in here. Here, we're actually going to buy because I'm excited. Ooh, and where is our time running on? That's why. Let's turn it back on. We're going to buy. Well, let's get her a bench so she can sit down and she can relax. And there's a little turtle to look at her. And now we got a little owl statue that she can stare at, and we'll buy a new little cash register. Look at us just spending money left and right. Look at that, we bought all the upgrades! Oh wait, we missed one. The weather vane! Ha! Ha! Now we'll have guests coming out of the yin yang and they'll have to buy our $400 roses. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to do that. Travel the world, uh, interview people, uh, finish up my biology degree, and become a a biologist of note would be really great. I'm finding that as I get older, I'm less interested in the research side of things, and I feel like I can have a bigger impact myself on the educational side of things, which is why I do these sort of things. In a way, this is my dream job uh, watered down a little bit, because I, I still need to get my university degrees, and I definitely need more hardware, and I definitely don't have like press access to, say, like the lemur research center that they have in North Carolina University. I would love to go and interview some of those people who specialize in studying lemurs. That would be so fun. I don't have access to those things yet, and I hope that I can grow to the point where one day I can. So maybe the, maybe instead of this saying this is my dream job light, I should say this is the first steps of my dream job. Very exciting. Also, are there any plants I don't like? A question from Trinity. Well, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I'm actually not fond of cedar. <laughs> That's so random, I know, but I think that um, the coniferous trees are a little more boring because they're, they're the same all year round. They don't have that exciting rush of watching the buds come out and then watching as the leaves unfold in these brilliant emerald beautiful things that then fall to the ground in the autumn. I find pine and cedar to be kind of boring, but I think it depends on location. When we moved out here, I was out on a trail hiking one day, and I found myself in the middle of a very tall, like these trees were very tall and thin, pine forest. The leaves, or I should say the pine needles, didn't even begin until about 20 feet up in the air. It was just like straight bark all the way up. And as I stood there, I, I just stood because sometimes you just stop moving in a forest. You just kind of take in the peace and the quiet and it was really nice and I could hear the trees creaking in the wind. I could hear the pine needles rustling against one another and I realized that maybe I'm okay with pine trees. I think it just depends on location and context. Um, I would love Christmas trees. <laughs> Christmas tree farms are a huge thing out here actually. Uh, they're pretty sustainably managed and it's like either a Christmas tree farm or a parking lot is gonna go there. So what do you want? And I would prefer to have a Christmas tree farm if I had to pick the tree in the two, you know? Uh, they're pretty sustainably managed, usually very small family operated things and they sell to bigger companies who then sell the Christmas trees you can buy at Walmart or whatever. But I would love to have a Christmas tree. Um, because I think the, the scent and the smell is really nice. I just think they're boring plants though, so they're definitely not one of my favorites. <laughs> Let's see. And another, oh, a couple fun ones. So from Gabriel, we have some fish questions. My favorite member of the loach family. And that's actually a really good question. And look at that, people are buying my expensive roses. That's fantastic. 
Uh, a really great question, and luckily I happen to know a few members of the loach family, what we call the butterfly loach, which is actually, I think, like the reticulated loach. It has little, uh, li like little, almost like side fins. It looks basically like a little ding 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 stingray, only it's a loach. Uh, it's from Asia, and so the way that it looks like a stingray is actually so it can have little gripping kind of muscles on either side of its body because they're from really fast moving streams and those little those little fin looking like things that they have on either side they're kind of like flat fins help them hold on to the rocks and prevent them from being whisked away down into the stream also i don't think people are going to buy my nox at that price i think i'm just going to have to accept that i have to lower the price a little bit i yanked it up kind of high just to see if i could do it all right you guys you're clearing out what kind of seeds am I going to start expecting, huh? What about from you, my, my bamboo cross? Oop, butterfly. Doink! Got it. Let's get in back. Let's do it. All the upgrades. The super duper expensive butterfly net. There we go. Now we have the super fancy butterfly net. Alright, no seeds just yet. These guys are just starting to grow. My wee little babies. Who got spurted with the mutation spray. So it'll be interesting to see what they grow up into. But let's see. All right, we're just gonna have to see if we can sell the Nox. I wanna, eh, well, let's just add a couple of these guys. Boink. Oh, oh no, I'm out of mutation spray and out of money. Well, those are the breaks sometimes. So I do happen to know about members of the Loach family, Gabriel, thank you very much. Um, and that's because I used to be assistant manager at a pet store and I had a lot of crash courses in freshwater fish and I learned that fish are a whole nother ballpark. If you're a fish person, you're like a hardcore fish person and it takes a lot to be really well educated about fish. Um, my brother is a fish person and he knows more in his pinky about fish than I have in my entire head, so. <laughs> But I did learn about loaches. Uh, we often sold a few panda loaches and, you know, quarry cats and things like that. Um, that we kind of clustered into, sort of, they had similar characteristics, so we just kind of clustered them into the same groups. Um, and we had one that would be really good at eating snails that was super popular because if you have live plants, you often end up with snails infesting your entire tank. It's a big problem. And we had one that would eat those snails like mad and people could never, we couldn't keep those guys in stock. People needed them all the time. And speaking of fish, a very fun question from Nick, who has been snorkeling again. I'm so jealous of you, Nick. What is my favorite species of ray? And you know, I don't actually have a favorite because I have actually not lived near the ocean most of my life. Even though my family is Hawaiian uh, and mixed, my mom's not Hawaiian. Uh, she's just American mutt, you know, a little mix of everything. But even though my, my family is Hawaiian, we have lived in Texas and like the Midwest most of my life. So until my 24th birthday, I had actually never been out to the ocean before. And I spent my, 24th, my 24th birthday on the ocean for the first time. It was really amazing, very powerful experience, but it definitely did not include uh, seeing any stingrays or anything fun like that. I have pet stingrays at aquariums before. Uh, really, really, no, not stingrays, manta rays, I should say. Really large manta rays. That was very fun. But to really get good at knowing my rays, I'm going to have to study them up. And I actually think that's a fun challenge because I do live near the coast, a few hours drive, but it's close enough to the coast that I would love to add find stingrays or learn more about native ray families to my my to-do bucket list of biology things. Oh, what are your guys like to-do bucket list of biology related stuff? Oh, we got that little spider. Let me know, like, if you guys are really into to traveling, like, where do you want to go in the world? What's your bucket list? That's a really fun question, actually. So I'm going to end things on that question. Leave me some comments letting me know what are your bucket list things for what animals you would like to see, what places you would like to travel, what plants you would love to grow, those kinds of, like, biology-related stuff. And then when we come back, we'll have to see what our mutation liquid churned up for us. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Bye-bye.